Hello, my friends. You have finally purchased Azimutri Broadcast Virtual Production Software and Canon CRN700 PDZ camera. In this video, you will learn to quickly set up and start your virtual production project. But first, let us look at what you need to make these tools work. Other than Azimutri Broadcast License and Canon PDZ camera, you need a calibration board like this, a frame holder for calibration board or some sort of clamp to secure your calibration board to the light stand. A Logitech clicker. A sync generator that provides gen lock signal. Blackmagic Deckling 8K Pro PCIe card and a network switch. First, connect the network CAT7 cable to the PDZ camera and the network switch. I assume that your PC is already connected to the same network switch. Then, connect the GenLog signal output from the SYNC generator to the reference signal input of the Blackmagic Deadlink 8K Pro card. Next, connect the GenLog signal to the PDZ GenLog SYNC input. Finally, connect the 12G SDI output of the PDZ to the first input of the Blackmagic Deadlink 8K Pro card. Note that you will require 12G SDI cable for 4K SDI to work properly. Now that you have connected the cables, let's dive into the settings of the CRN700. Open the web browser and search for Canon support site. Click the select button for drivers, software and firmware. In the text box, type Camera Search 2 and download the software. After downloading, unzip the folder and run the software. If the Canon CRN700 is on the same network, you should be able to see the camera IP address and details. Double-click and open the camera IP. In the Exposure tab, set the Shoot Mode, Iris and Shutter Angle. Normally for green screen production, the shutter angle is 90 degrees and again to the lowest possible of your lighting condition. You can set either autofocus or manual focus. We find BT709 wide dynamic range color profile closest to our preference. Be sure to disable digital zoom and image stabilizer as it might affect the calibration if you make changes after calibration. You can save all these settings in the preset. For the second option tag, we mainly leave it at default settings. Next, click on the gear icon, type the username, password, check with Canon if you are unsure of the password. Make sure that the SDI output frame rate is the same as the gen lock signal frame rate used throughout the virtual production process. In this tutorial, we set it at 29.97. It is very important to ensure that the default gateway address is the same as the Azimutri PC. Ensure that the output tracking data, client IP address, is the same as Azimutri PC address. Take note of the client port number as this will be the 3D port number. Check that the input and set the environment at 29.97. Alright, we are good to start Azimutri calibration software. First, set the 3D channel settings. This is to ensure that the PDZ camera is sending 3D data into Azimutri calibration software. Click 
create a new profile name for this calibration. Select the sensor, Canon CR-N700. Click on the adjustable button and start calibration. Check that the calibration board is in focus and follow closely to the instructions. One of the concerns for calibrating zoom is that the studio might not have sufficient depth. Well, we can resolve this by changing the board to a smaller grid like this. If you encounter this towards the end of the calibration, do not panic. Click the button, I can't go there. For now, just use the large grid. Alright, let's continue with the calibration. Two hours later. Congratulations! You have completed the calibration. Open the asymmetry broadcast DE Composer. First, check your SDI input settings, tracking device settings, and choose the correct calibration profile. Your zoom device settings is the same as tracking device settings. Next, click on Studio button and adjust the studio settings accordingly. Click on Input 1 button, scroll to Tracking Delay and adjust the tracking delay. You find 2 to 2.5 close to the stickiness that you want. Next, adjust the zoom delay. Similarly, around 2.2.5 value is good. Let us do a quick chroma keying on the background. But if you would like to achieve the best keying results for asymmetry track cam, be sure to use the 3D clean plate function. Alright, it's done. You may now start using your PDZ for tracking. Oh, and one important thing. PDZ doesn't know the height. You have to measure from the ground to the PDZ camera height and input this for the scene. Have fun and I will see you in the next video.